Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet. Welcome back to another Daily Masters cast. We've got an excellent game once again from the uh, Aces Team Story Cup, which just has so many good games in it. So we're just going to keep on casting them. Eventually, we will get around to, uh, I think I've got the playoff games from um, the DreamHack Open Winter or whatever the hell it's called, DreamHack Winter. But for now, I just like casting these games, man. There's so many good players in these games. And as well as that, you get to see a lot of players that you wouldn't normally see in the top levels of tournaments going out against players who definitely are in the top level of tournaments. Example right here, Innovation. One of the best players in the world, number two on the WCS, over 6,000 points. And he is playing for a Team Acer, I think. He's part of Team Acer, so very, very awesome. And he's playing off against Crank. Now, Crank is part of uh, Team Axiom, and also from South Korea. He's number 50 on the WCS, with uh, uh, just over 1,000 points. So, yeah, this is a pretty... Uh, this is, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we will see exactly how he does against Innovation. I mean, Innovation, very, very strong player, very, very solid. And Crank, I think, is going to have a bit of an uphill battle because we've seen Innovation in action. We know exactly how crazy he is, but that's the beauty of this tournament, man. I mean, just, just because you see a player like Innovation in a game doesn't necessarily mean he's going to win. Crank could definitely win this. I mean, he's going to have his work cut out for them, but I think he could definitely pull this out. And it's, it's a chance for players who aren't right at the top who um, to, to actually go off against these players in just a 1v1 environment. And they don't have to get through any sort of playoffs or group stages or anything to get there. It's just boom, done. And we'll see because, I mean, if Crank wins that, that's definitely going to be a uh, nice medal on, his, uh, medal on his sleeve for uh, whatever he does later on. If he, I mean, it, it's a team game, but... Uh, it, it's it's like other sports, man. You play as a team, but individually, if you do something awesome, then that reflects on your record. It's exactly the same thing in StarCraft 2. So you play as a team, but you can still do absolutely awesome stuff. Oh, innovation, man. So close to blocking that. I think he was actually going for the probe or something, but no, just could not manage it. But we do have a Reaper coming down that Reaper is going to be all sorts of pain. We don't have a Stalker coming out yet. We do have a Mothership Core coming out, but the Mothership Core is going to be slow as balls when it comes to deflecting the Reaper. So, when you see how it comes out, the Mothership Core, beautiful timing though, and sees that Reaper instantly. And I guess the Mothership Core is going to be just staying on defense right now, just uh, blocking this guy, just sort of circling around the middle, keeping the Reaper away. And Innovation is going to have to think of something dicey to uh, do some sort of um, move in here. But the Mothership Core actually moving off does not realize the Reaper has come back. And the Reaper does not have enough time to kill anything. You need at least four or five good shots on a probe to kill it with a Reaper. And Crank is not going to let Innovation have that much time. So going to be going down. The Reaper just trying, trying his best, but not going to happen. We do not have any more Reapers coming out. Uh, looks like Innovation has switched over to uh, marine production and that is going to be fine. So we got a, one single stalker over there, Mothership Core over there. We do have a fast Twilight Council. This could be for fast storms. It could also be for Blink or something like that. I really don't know. Um, Blink, I'm not sure. I've never seen Blink used really, really well against Terran players. It's more a, uh, a mass Blink is more a PvP strategy, but there we go, Blink is coming up, so we are going to be seeing uh, Blink used against Innovation. We're going to be seeing exactly how this goes, and this may be a strategy that Innovation is not prepared for. I, I do not know, because uh, I do know, in the very general sort of terms, what sort of strategies are popular in um, TVP and PVT. I mean, it's basically Triple M, and then you counter them with either Colossus or Storm, and then you start getting Vikings and Ghosts in there, and it goes up to the late game usually. So, mid to late game, but early game? Eh, not, not too much. I've never really seen any massive early game plays from uh, either players. Well, um, I, either Terran or Protoss in a PVT. I mean, other than pressure like this, you get a couple of Stalkers out, 
you get a couple of a uh, bunch of marines out, you come and uh, do a bit of harassment, and usually you both players survive, you get some nice sentry use, or a very, very early storm starts going off, or you just get enough zealots out there to hold them off. But the thing is, Blink doesn't really help mid to late game for the Protoss playing against a Terran player, man. It's all Colossus, it's all Storm. Blink doesn't really help that much. The only thing you can really help against is if you're chasing down Vikings. Like, if you've got a ton of Vikings, you're chasing them down, you send out your Blink Stalkers to take them out, and it's beautiful. But even then, you usually end up blinking into the army, so... He's obviously thinking of something else, Matt. That is six gateways being produced right now. So, let's have a look. He's got to be thinking about some sort of two base seven gate play. Which is, uh, which is very, very popular. And looking at his income, I think he should be able to pull it off. Um, the pylon count may be a little bit of a worry. He's got to build a bunch more of those. But I really... This this could actually be quite scary. And with Blink, and with the Mothership Core, he can Blink right up the top. Innovation knows something is going on, though. He's got a lot of units up there. He's got a bunker up there. So I don't know how, but he is prepared for this. He's seen all the Stalkers right in front of his base. He's sending out the factory to do a bit of scouting. Sees eight or nine Stalkers right in front of his base. And he's... I think he's okay. He's got three Marauders. He's got a bunch of Marines. And the Blink, the beautiful Blink Micro of Crank is going to be a lot harder to pull off when he's blinking up here. Because he has to use a Blink to get up there. And then he's got no Blink left for Micro to save the ones that are wounded. So he might be better off just going in the front. But there's uh, two Bunkers and one of them is like seven SCVs already on it. But there we go. And the DPS of Crank just too much. And going straight out to the second bunker, it goes down. And this is a crazy amount of Stalkers, man. The seven gate off two bases does an insane amount of uh, insane amount of guys coming out. We just saw the economy. It was 44 workers versus 35. So Crank really pushing the Chrono, getting the expansion out nice and early. And it's really paying off here. He's doing irreplaceable worker damage right now. And the time warp on the uh, Marines, slowing them down, stopping them from using Stim to get in nice and close. And now we're seeing a bit of a Blink Micro here. Innovation is taking a lot of hits from the Marauders. But he's starting to focus fire some of the Marauders to get him down. He's also killing a lot of Marines. And this play is absolutely insane. We have a look at the army. He's 38, 44, sorry, over 25. He's warping in a ton of units. And trying vainly to rebuild the bunkers. But this early, early 7-gate pressure, I think it took Innovation completely by surprise. He was not planning for it long term. And short term... He saw that something crazy was going on. He put the bunkers on the high ground. He got the guys up there to protect from the blink. But long term, he did not have a plan for this. And this has just worked out beautifully. I mean, innovation. This is his last stand right now. And I think he, I think he's going to go down. I mean, Crank can just build so many more reinforcements. Innovation has not had time to get his infrastructure up. He's got a total of two barracks at the moment. That is two barracks. One with a tech lab, one with a reactor. And you just cannot build enough units to f counter a 7-gate off that. It's impossible. So, Crank, I mean, he, he decided to go for that strategy, just mass Blink Stalker, 7-gate uh, off 2-base, and it worked so beautifully. It was phenomenal because Innovation, man, and a lot of Terran players in PvT... They like to get their um, macro up. They like to go macro, 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 macro. So it's it takes a while for them to get all those barracks up, to get all that income up. And yeah, it takes time. And Crank, he just zoomed ahead. The thing is, he didn't go for any tech. Robo facility, none. Twilight Council, just enough to get Blink. No Storms, no Colossus, no Forge for getting any upgrades. He didn't go for any of that tech at all. He just went for Blink. And that's it, he just used the rest of his income just to go for a ton of Stalkers. And it's it, we're absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So <laughs> there we go, Innovation suffering a defeat there uh, from Crank with a very well executed 7 gate. And that has been that for today. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys tomorrow with another game. Stay tuned. This has been Harry Muppet. I hope you enjoyed this game.